Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the sporting Dogo Argentina. Ah! Wow! Banned across the world in many countries due to accusations that its power and aggression is way too high for the average pet owner to be able to control properly. So last year Animal Watch decided to travel abroad to meet some Dogo Argentinos in order to see why in person they are considered dangerous. We met the show line. He was indeed huge, muscly and extremely powerful with the same sex aggression which was very obvious. However, he was show line. A line bred for the show ring with far less athleticism and drive than the raw boar hunting dogs of old. So today we bring you the ultimate raw untampered Dogo Argentino, the working and hunting line Dogo. Will he be the same as his show cousin or perhaps show the real reasons to why he was banned in the UK? To do this, we have met up with some dog owners who have agreed to go on camera, despite owning this banned breed on UK soil. We will blur their faces out for the safety of the dogs involved. Stay tuned to find out what we made of the feistier working line, Dogo Argentino. The Dogo Argentino, a courageous, fearless dog who can trace his roots back to Argentina in 1928. A doctor named Antonio Norres Martinez wanted to develop a dog that was suitable for big game hunting, especially wild boar, as well as an excellent watchdog and family companion. And so he created the Dogo Argentino. He was created first and foremost with the Cordoba Fighting Dog. This breed is extinct today, but it was said that it was a large and ferocious dog with great hunting skills. Martinez crossed it with the Great Dane, Boxer, Spanish Mastiff, Old English Bulldog, Bull Terrier, Pyrenean Mastiff, English Pointer, Irish Wolfhound and Dog de Bordeaux. In 1991, the UK passed the Dangerous Dog Act, which banned four breeds considered to be highly dangerous after a spate of dog attacks, which incidentally didn't even include the Dogo Argentino. They banned these four breeds basically due to their perceived strength, predatory nature and dog fighting history, almost as if to presume they would cause issues if allowed to stay in the UK. Now the show line Dogo Argentino that I had met had been fairly low energy, quite broad and heavy set. They were relaxed in public, except for when a dog of the same sex would pass by, then the hidden demon would arise. They were great with humans and children, so no different than any other Mastiff breed in the UK. The only issue arising was due to their strength, very few people would be able to control one in a public area. And worse still, if it was an irresponsible owner, then this dog most probably would have fought a few dogs at the local dog park. So it got me thinking about the true working lines after a spate of comments on my episode saying that only the working lines would show the true drive and character of this dog and the show line was simply not athletic enough to represent this breed. We were approached by some Dogo Argentino owners at an undisclosed location in the UK who wanted to show us their dogs without showing their faces on camera in order to protect their dogs. They are totally Team Dogo Argentino and want to see its return back to UK soil. Hello! Hi! Oh my goodness! 
what a welcome! What a welcome! Oh my goodness me, they're so powerful! Yeah, yeah, very strong. Very, very strong. Oh, what a sausage! Yeah, he's very calm around people. He's so he beautiful. Yeah. She's seven and are all the females she's... smaller like this? Um, they are. Well, she's like a couple of months younger, but they are a little bit smaller in size compared to a male, just there like every other breed. The dogs were so very different to look at than the show line. They were muscular but tapered, very lithe and athletic. They were also very lively and energetic. It was like comparing the XL bully to the American Pitbull Terrier. One being very broad and heavy, and the other made to do sporting and hunting. I can see the difference between them and the show line Dogo Argentino immediately. Yeah, they difference. are just, they just look like they made to do a job. That's you know, what they do, yeah. Run in the field, be working, be hunting. Yeah. Look at this, how athletic you are. They have, they have too much energy, like they never, yeah. they never stop. It's an all day thing. It was clear to see the power behind these dogs. It literally took a full grown man's entire strength to hold one of these back. And these dogs were not shy in making their presence known when other dog walkers went by. Are they a challenge at this age already? Yeah, already at this age, like um, they have a high prey drive and they just, whenever they see another like small animal, they straight away want to go for them. So you got to always be like attentive and ready for anything that yeah. pops out. So um, I guess that means they've got to be on the lead most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. Unless we're in a closed and gated, uh, uh, gated area, then we can let them off. Yeah, but yeah. then we know like we're safe and everyone else yeah. is safe as well. They could be calm like they are right now. Yeah. And the switch is so fast, it's like yeah. you just got to be ready and like you can't let them go. So they have a play drive, it's mainly against same sex um, dogs. She's okay with people, but she doesn't like male or female. No. Yes, and she's like very protective of herself. Um, so, so you yeah. feel like the female character is quite different to the males? Yeah, it's, it's much more, more protective, they're more like independent. They are so so powerful they're if very I, powerful if yeah. i held one i'd have a problem holding it yeah it's like whenever we're walking them and they do pull a little it's like being on a gym workout yeah. because our whole body aches they won't even be full adults till they're three yeah so these guys do you expect them to get a lot bigger yeah they're gonna get a lot bigger a lot more wider put more muscle on the dogs were very human friendly and engaging super affectionate i really did like them a lot the doggo was bred to be people yeah. friendly. Not a guard dog, it's not a protecting dog, it's it's a working hunting yeah. dog. These guys are friendly, aren't they, to yeah. children and I, to people, as you're saying, it's just a, yeah, it's a I dog think problem. With a lot of massive breeds, what the issue they have with children is like, the dog itself doesn't know how big they are. So mm -hmm. like, these like to jump. So even with a the kid, they'll, they'll jump up and they knock it down. But it's like, because they're still kids themselves mentally, they don't they don't really know how big they are. No. So when we, whenever they are, <laughs> You can there see you go, like yeah. he's getting dragged away. He's powerful dog hair, powerful. Yeah. Anybody that's got a little tiny child and yeah. they leave it in the room with a mm -hmm. massive dog like this. That's just irresponsible, it's isn't it? irresponsible yeah. and it's a horrible what might happen, you know, if something terrible was to happen. But a lot of the time when you look at the attacks, mm -hmm. it's down to problems with the owners, negligence, leaving children with giant dog breeds when they're not in, yeah. leaving children with dogs that aren't even familiarized to the family. You've got a powerful, strong dog like this, then you 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 can't go out and leave your kids with it. And I'm not saying 100%. they're gonna attack your kids, but as you were saying, they're gonna push them over, they're gonna scratch them. How much exercise do they need? I'm sure these guys we need take them a walking. walk in the morning, and then um, in the, obviously in the evening, we take them for like, it's like a walk, then a, a run, then a, like a cool down walk. <laughs> so they have, yeah. So that's just like them like playing about. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, in the evening do get like about two hours worth of exercise. And what are they like around the house? Are they do they lie down and they calm or are um, they they're quite They're very rebunctious? very relaxed, very relaxed. Very very relaxed, yeah. which is a common thing with mastiff breeds in general yeah, that like, they are actually quite easy to have around the house. Yeah, they just want to be your best friend, lay down with yeah. you. They just sit by your feet. I think the the issue is just because they're so athletic and they're so yeah. prey driven. You yeah. guys can handle them because you're strong. It's not a dog for every owner because even on your worst day, they need that time and attention yeah. and that exercise. Otherwise mentally for them it's not good they're incredibly powerful so in the in the wrong hands 
it would go wrong. We eventually decided to leave as the Dogo Argentinos were way too interested in other people's dogs to make me feel comfortable. In conclusion, there is night and day between the show line and the working line. The working line is definitely the true spirit of this breed. These dogs most certainly have the power to run extremely fast and pull down huge prey animals like wild boar. But again, it comes down to responsible ownership. In the right hands, these dogs would make beautiful companions as long as they were worked very hard and walked under full leashed control at all times due to their overwhelming urge to chase animals, which we witnessed firsthand while filming. The dogs I met were leashed and under control at all times, but they were keen to want to chase dogs and prey animals in the distance, and it was truly hard work holding them back. So this is why the government is going to be hard pushed to reintroduce them back into the UK as many of the British pet owners simply are not up to the job of controlling such a powerful dog. This dog breed was no more challenging than a lot of the legal giant breeds we have filmed here on Animal Watch. However, due to being blacklisted, has driven their ownership into the shadows, out of sight, which I don't believe is a good thing for the breed. With enforced licenses and mandatory dog training courses, all dog breeds should be allowed to exist here in the UK. But let's control the owners, not the dogs. Let's set up a tier system, with the most challenging dogs being graded a top level one, where you must pay for a license and prove you are responsible enough to own one. Banned dogs are still owned in every country, but often kept in secret. Doesn't it make sense to simply control who can have one so we can protect vulnerable dogs? And yes, I'm including the Dogo Argentino as vulnerable. They are only made this way due to us humans. So it's our job to protect them now they're here. And if you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel where we'd be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now.